शिव शक्तुक्त यदि शक्त प्रभावित न चे देव देव न खलु कुशल स्पंदी अथस्वाध्यंग हरिहर विरिंचादिरपी प्रणंतुम स्तोतुम वाकतमकृतपुण्या प्रभवती Namaste. So last time we talked about how the goddess Shakti is the Kundalini in the Kula path, which is the spinal channel leading from the root to the thousand petal lotus at the top of the head, and that this is the actual physiological basis for the path of self-realization. This. study or this sadhana is called kaula yoga or kaula tantra as opposed to samaya tantra which is the conventional religious path so we presented oh about 8 uh, or 9 names of the goddess from the lalita sahasranam that support this uh, understanding this view And now I want to talk about the grantis. Granti means not. Huh? So in the cord in the shushumna going from the root to the thousand petal lotus there are three knots. Well actually four. <laughs> But if you come to this discussion uh, at all if you can relate to it even a little bit you already passed the first one so it doesn't matter <laughs> the first knot is between a pashu an animalistic human being and one on the path of self realization one who has accepted that the goal is to transcend this ordinary life and reach something divine maybe he doesn't have a clear idea what that is but that's okay at least he's made the start so now the main obstacle becomes identification with the body we all think when we think of i who am i who we think of oh i'm this body and so in the dwaita vada stage one of the phenomena that indicate the end of it or the goal of it is the cessation of this identification with the body and there's usually a an experience called the change in heart that goes along with that and lol well, let me read through the names from the lalita sahasranam that describe this process of breaking through the grantis or knots and then you'll get a better picture of the whole thing and then we can talk about the details muladharai kanilaya means she whose chief residence is the muladhara chakra mula means root and so the root chakra or the base chakra the chakra at the at the absolute uh, bottom of the spinal column is where she resides coiled up like a snake huh the kundalini this life energy which in the chinese system is known as original chi is vital to our existence and as soon as this energy passes from the body then it's over <laughs> we're out of here so this kundalini then has to be cultivated to rise up through the spinal column now of course if you are alive <laughs> you already have life energy moving through the spinal column but because of the knots the presence of the restrictions or gates on this process we have a limited amount of energy available so the purpose of tantra especially sexual tantra 
is to break through these limitations and reach our full energy. Now, this is the one point that I agree completely with Osho Rajneesh, that if you have repressed your sex energy, you will not have the full energy available for the rest of the process of, self, of self-realization. So, not that, well, the, the religious path says we should increase the sex energy by remaining celibate. In other words, don't spend anything, you know. But this is a miserly kind of mood. And it leads to people being underdeveloped in the body and heart and overdeveloped in the intellect and mind. So we see examples of this all the time, especially in a place like where I stay, near the holy mountain, where there are many sadhus and gurus and masters of this and that. And almost all of them are completely up in their heads. They're not grounded. They're not like down to earth, as we say. They're like floating up in some meme space (laughs) and making judgments about people based completely on intellect, words, symbols, identification with ideas. So if that's the symptom of repressing the sex energy, I don't want anything to do with it. (laughs) My gurus have all been very down-to-earth people very uh, strongly rooted and full of energy and life and good humor. I wouldn't accept them otherwise. Just like my sannyas guru, he was was such an ordinary acting person. He didn't put on any airs at all. And so nobody could identify him as being self-realized except me. because I could see certain symptoms, very subtle symptoms. And I called him on it one day and he admitted. (laughs) So anyway, the next name, name 100, Brahma Granti Vibhedini, she who breaks through the barrier of Brahma to the subtle dimension. What is that subtle dimension? It's the dimension of rasa. The yoga that uh, addresses this condition is bhakti. Karma yoga is appropriate in the Dvaitavada stage. But in the Vishishta Dvaita stage, the bhakti yoga is the appropriate practice. So what's the difference? In Dvaitavada, The yoga is performed under strict rules and regulations. One must have a guru. One cannot be a bona fide yogi without it. So when one has a guru and practices those rules and regulations, this leads to the change in heart, the uh, dropping the identification with the body, passing through the Brahma Granti, Brahma creates the whole physical universe, the body, the senses, and all that. So when one bypasses all these and reaches the essence, the energy, uh, and the emotions that stem from one's relationship with God in a particular mood or rasa, this is the breakthrough, the change in heart that we're looking for. So one who uh, breaks through this Brahma Granti is known as Brahma Granti Vibhedini. Manipur Antar Udita. She who then emerges in the Manipur Chakra. The Manipur Chakra is the heart. And Bhakti, real Bhakti, Not bhakti based on rules and regulations, but spontaneous, loving bhakti uh, is uh, rooted in the heart. One uh, develops, cultivates, and eventually perfects a certain rasa or ecstatic loving relationship with a particular form of God in a particular pastime. 
and in this way develops their love to the highest level called prema. Prema is one of those things that can't be described because it involves an identification of the lover with the beloved. One realizes that God is within me, huh? not something outside, not an object, actually, but the subject, and that the so-called uh, self, the ego, the body, the mind, uh, the personality, the individual, is the actual object. It's very hard to describe. So this realization, which is also accompanied by ecstatic symptoms, which we've been over in previous videos, but beginning with tears, a horripilation, goosebumps all over the body, sometimes crying, sometimes laughing. Huh? It's, it's kind of a madness. <laughs> it's described very well by Rumi in his poems on devotion. And, and this kind of God madness is the perfection of the uh, bhakti. And then this leads to the next name, Vishnu Granti Vibedini, she who breaks through the barrier of Vishnu to the still subtler dimension. And the next name, Agnya Chakrantarala Sta, she who then abides in the Agnya Chakra. So the Vishnu Granti is the knot of emotional identification. Just as the Brahma Granti was the knot of identification with the body, mind, senses, and like that, the creations of Brahma. The Vishnu Granti is the identification with a particular emotional state. And it, when one realizes this, it becomes clear that one's whole life, one was seeking a certain mood, a certain emotion. I remember seeing very clearly one time that every time I would enter a new place or a new situation, I would evaluate it in terms of my particular rasa. Whether this is a good place, a good location or situation to experience that particular feeling, that particular emotion which I would want to experience the most. So this is also an ecstatic state. Uh, but it's an ecstatic state where one realizes one's complete identification with God. Actually, God is within me. I am He. He is I. There's no difference. It's a very, very beautiful thing. And then after that, the energy is located in the Agnya Chakra. Agnya means I don't know. <laughs> not knowing. So this is the state of intellectual uh, pursuit of the absolute. And therefore the appropriate yoga is Raja Yoga. In Raja Yoga, which is deep meditation, silent meditation, meditation on emptiness and realization of Shunya, um, this is the classic uh, meditation stage. And this is called vivartavada. Vivarta means appearance. One sees the world, the body, the senses, their objects, and so on, as simply an appearance. In the beginning, this is only an intellectual knowledge. But after years of practice of deep meditation, one comes to realize it, in fact. This is really the way it is. And that leads to the next name. Rudra Granti Vibhedini. She who finally breaks through the barrier of Rudra to the subtlest dimension. And that is followed by Sahasraram Bhujarudha. 
she who then ascends to the Sahasrara Chakra. And what is the final one? Sudhasara Bivarsini. She who sends streams of nectarian bliss from the transcendent moon of the Sahasrara Chakra. So this is real self-realization. This is the ultimate. This is the goal. This is what we're shooting for from the very start. Although in the beginning we may not realize it. Huh? But this is what we really want. This is where we're going. So what is this Rudra Granti? Huh? Which I incorrectly noted in uh, some earlier versions of these talks as the Shiva Granti. It's not. It's the Rudra Granti. And the difference is subtle but profound. Shiva is the unmanifest, um, pure awareness without an object. Shiva has really no form, no activities like that. He's simply content with meditating on himself, <laughs> being aware of himself, actually. And so Shakti forms all of the other forms and creations. Huh? And the forms of Shiva created by Shakti are known as Rudras. And Rudras play the role of destruction in the cosmic manifestation. So the Rudra Granti then is somewhere uh, not localized in any chakra, but between the Agnya Chakra here and the Sahasrara Chakra here. And so to break through the Rudra Granti means to let go of all attachment to name and form. And certainly mind. Huh? Mind is seen as a complete illusion. And that leads to the ultimate in self-realization, which is actual identification with Shiva. So I'm just going to tell one story. So this isn't just a, a dry uh, intellectual exercise here. Huh? Two years ago, almost to the day, on Mahashivaratri, which is coming up in just a few days. Um, I was meditating, as usual, before falling asleep. Or no, actually, I had fallen asleep, and I woke up for some reason. And so I was using the opportunity to observe how do you pass back and forth between the different states of consciousness, sleep and waking, and so on. Uh, and suddenly I had a vision. And in the vision, I was living in Tiruvannamala at the time. In the vision, I saw the holy mountain, which is supposed to be a form of Shiva. And I saw then, like the mountain became transparent, and I saw Shiva sitting within the mountain. Oh, this was great, yeah, Shiva Ratri. But then he looked at me and he showed me myself sitting in the mountain in his place. And then I, I woke up, you know, because this was shocking. And I came to the realization that Shivoham, Shivoham. Om Tatsat, Om Harihi Om.